Hi, I'm Mike Turner, Senior Industrial Designer with DG Design, and I'm introducing a series of industry blogs looking at V-RED usage within a, a live industry environment. In this episode, I'm going to be looking at uh, exterior ray tracing and how to apply basic motion to images within V-RED to convey a sense of dynamism and speed. Uh, I hope you enjoy the tutorial. Okay, so here we've got our model in our scene. Um, nothing very special about it at this stage. Um, there's no animation assigned. We've got a model in a HDR dome. And, th and this tutorial is going to look at just applying a little bit of motion to, to the scene so that when you take static images out of it, uh, you get an animated feel. Because it's, it's nice being able to show vehicles in a static environment, but also you know, because they're moving, you, you want to be able to capture that and convey that as part of the um, design intent. So you please bear with me through this tutorial. I'm normally working across two monitors, uh, but for the sake of walking through things with you guys and capturing everything on one screen, I've had to condense everything down here. So from time to time, it, it may be a little bit condensed. Um, but we're going to start with animating the wheels, which is a, a fairly straightforward process in V-RED. Uh, but let, let me walk you through that. Um, if we take the front left wheel, if we bring up the wireframe front so we can see what we're doing, um, we can see that in here the, the pivot center for it isn't centered on the wheel. But if we come into transform, we move with the rotation pivot to the center of the wheel, um, that will rotate around that center point now, which is great. But So what we're going to do next is if I bring up my curves box, is looking at the... Uh, rotation we're going to keyframe it so at the first instance we'll keyframe it in its start position and then at the end of the animated tab we want that to rotate through let's say minus 360 degrees so it's rotated and if we key that again you can see we get motion in there and let me walk you through that process again for the the rear left wheel yeah we can see that the rotation pivot isn't centered on the object, but if we move it to the object center, wind the frame back again, key, if we go to the rear left to get that in there and get the rotation up, key it in its first instance, roll it to the end and go minus 360 again, key that. So what you should find is both of those are, are now rotating. Now, the nice thing with V-RED is once you've got animations assigned, it's very easy to copy those across. So for this rear right wheel, again, before we start, let's move the pivot to the object center so it's doing what we want it to do. But if we take the rear left animation, if we go edit, animation, copy animation, to the rear right wheel, we can go edit, animation, paste animation. Yeah, which means that now that one's rotated as well. So once you've got an animation channel set up that's working, you can apply it to other objects in the scene. So again, with the front right one, let's make sure our pivot is set to the object center. And again, if we go to our front left wheel, this one around here, yeah, we go edit, animation, copy animation, front right, edit, animation, paste animation. So you've got that effective movement on the wheels now replicated to all four, which is great. Uh, but to actually start to see that in the scene, we need to set up a camera such that it's got a uh, motion blur assigned to it. So if we come into our camera settings, if we bring that up on screen, if we bring up perspective, you need to have anti-alias running so that you can see it but you need motion blur enabled as well, so you can start to see that. And based on that, you've got shutter presets in here. The further you come down this, the more extreme the blur will get to the point where yeah, the wheels look like they're you know, spinning really, really quick in that shot, and you can change your shutter preset back up. You can put in custom values, but the principles on it are, are there. So the higher up you go, the faster the shutter, the lower down you go, the slower. Okay, so now we've obviously got animation onto our wheel channels, but there's things still looks completely static within the scene. So 
What I want to do next is a, a little trick that I've been shown to actually animate the dome. If we come into the materials here and, and look at the HDRI options, um, if you play around with the uh, environment center position, you can simulate the dome movement, um, which is, is useful. So if, if we set that to zero in the first instance, wind our time scale back, and if we come back to here and look at where our center point is, key in the first one, move it to there, wind it to the end of our time slider, and then put in a value of maybe 2000. There you go, and key that. You've now got this situation, if we close a few windows down so you can see it a little bit more, it's feeling that the vehicle is, is passing through the scene. Uh, which works quite effectively. There's different ways of doing this. Uh, there's additional things you can do, uh, which I'll touch on in a minute, but for now, this this will do to get the ball rolling. So if we come back to our camera view now, uh, and we pull that across so that you guys can see in. Uh, within this track, yeah, we've got our original viewpoint. Uh, and if we ray trace that, you get, get the initial impression. But obviously we've not got motion blur running within here at the minute. So what we do again is if we want to see that, we come back into our camera settings, uh, enable motion blur, bring that down to eighth, maybe an eighth or, or even slower. So half a second will get a more extreme effect. And so, you know, without really having to do a great deal of work at all. You know, all we've done is animate the environment channel and animate the wheels. Yeah, you know, we've we've created uh, very very quickly quite a dynamic environment. Something that you can you know use in any number of different view angles to to give us quite uh, a dramatic uh, impression of what the designs would look like if it was in motion. Uh, works quite well. Now there are additional uh, or alternate ways of doing it, or ways of adding in extra motion, um, which we can briefly touch on. If we just switch off the ray tracing, switch off the anti-alias, what I've got set up in here is a, a, cam a camera with aim. Um, so you basically, it's a two part camera, if I bring, bring this on screen. You've got a camera, if you set up a new one, it's probably the easiest way to show you. Create camera and aim. So basically, if you then drop the aim back into the main vehicle geometry, what you'll find is if you switch to that camera view, it will track vehicle movement. But at the minute, we've not got any vehicle motion assigned. But for example, if we, if I, where can I park this so you can see it? Um, if we look at this, wind, wind this motion back to the start. Currently, there's no animation assigned to the vehicle itself. But if we were to say, pick that vehicle, translation, maybe at this point it's doing that, and by the end of the scene, it's moved forward maybe 2,000. Yeah, we, if we track that, we can see that with the camera and aim, the aim is actually keeping the vehicle centered within the scene because that's where the aim point is located. So you get the sense that the vehicle is, is moving in that respect too. That works quite well, but obviously you've, you've got vehicle moving within the scene to contend with, which when you're queuing up a series of static shots, yeah, maybe maybe isn't what you want. So we can just come back to our regular perspective view, engage anti-alias, and because we've got motion assigned to the vehicle at the minute, that's tripping us up a little bit, but we can simply come back into here, delete that animation channel, and we're back to effectively what we had before. Um, so that's that's the gist of very sort of basic keyframe animation for the sake of getting your images out. Uh, and it does result in really tidy images when you've done it. The only thing that I will touch on briefly while we're, we're talking about cameras and camera sets up here is recently I've been playing around with um, what's going on with the tone mapper a little bit more. And if you look in the presets for this, you've got options in here. Um, standard tone, tone mapper is your Reinhard Luminance, but I've been playing around with Filmic um, because you get just a little bit more sort of brightness and, and contrast thrown into the scene. Now, again, previously this was something I was doing in, in Photoshop to post-process the image, but, but again, you can do these kind of things, you can make these kind of finite adjustments within V-RED so that it's, it's giving you what you want. 
Um, so that's quite nice to play around with. As far as my camera settings go on this filmic thing, I've dialed down the shoulder strength and the toe strength to be just 0.5. Seems to give me good balance on that. And the other thing that I've been playing around with in, in my images is to add a little bit of glow. Um, and again, this comes in in the glow channel if you have that enabled. There we go. Uh, the default values I think are, are two on the threshold, but I brought that down a little bit. And again, I've reduced the intensity of it. If you have it on one, it, you get a much more extreme effect. And in this view, it's sort of blowing out the background, but I've, I've dialed that down to 0.25. And again, it just gives a, a little bit more sort of dynamism to the scene. It's it's hinting at sort of motion. It's hinting at, at sort of what's going on with the lighting. And again, it just just gives a little bit more character to your images. It's very very simple to do in V-Red, and you don't need to worry about post processing it. Which again, having this kind of functionality available to use, particularly great, particularly if you're going to stitch a sequence of images together to make an animation. You're, you're not needing to do any post processing. You've got all that built into your scene, which is absolutely great and is is really powerful when when you get to you know, develop particular animations. So there you go. That, that's a very, very quick run through of, of setting up basic vehicle motion. Uh, once you've got the rig set, it's very easy. You can just pump out any number of views and you'll get that same sort of dynamic feel to, to what you're producing. Um, so yeah, have fun with that. Best of luck. Okay. Thanks very much. I hope you found that of some use and interest. And I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Thanks very much.